Welcome back to the channel everybody. This is Steve KM9G and hams and weather. Hams and weather go together like two birds of a feather. Yep, yep, I went there. I said it. But uh, Radioddity makes radio gear. They also make emergency gear. They also make weather gear. And they sent me over this weather station to review. And I'm like, yeah, I know a lot of people that would be really interested in that. Let's see what we can figure out. Let's get this thing opened up. All right. Always practice knife safety by not following any of the things that I do with a knife in a video. We will break the seal, put the knife away, all right, right away this is pretty well packed. So what do we have? We have the user's manual, and the user's manual is a uh, Pretty thick, what does it say? 40, 72 pages. It's all in English. Excellent, so this is Wi-Fi weather station with wireless channel remote sensor. All right, so here we have Display unit comes very well protected. You can see my reflection of my window out there. Oh, there's me. We'll get that lit up later. We have what looks to be a remote control. Oh no, Ther thermo hygrometer sensor transmitter. Little tiny power supply, how cute. Mounting hardware. More mounting hardware. This looks like you can screw it down to a flat surface or you can connect it to a pole and mount it on a pole. We'll probably do the pole mount option. It's dusty inside the box. I don't know how they got the dust inside the box, but they did. All right, there is the weather sensor itself, an anemometer. It's like a little solar watch eye there, a rain collector. And there's your bucket for measuring the rain. And then a wind vane and wind direction. This is this is pretty stout for what it is. I mean, it is a piece of plastic, but it's a strong piece of plastic. And then you can mount it on the mast. Excellent, let's get the box out of the way and figure out what we do next. All right, there she is. I live out in the country on a farm, and so I have all of these T-posts in here. Any indication that this thing is not level is uh, purely a trick of nature and camera angles and the fact that I'm standing on a hill. But there is your weather sensor device. And again, you've got your anemometer, you've got a level here, which is why I know it's level. You have a light sensor, you have a rain collection cup, you have a solar panel. And if memory serves me right, this solar panel takes care of running the fan, which keeps the device cool. There's a thermometer in it. There is a wind direction meter in it. Underneath, there is room for some batteries, three, triple, three double A's and a reset switch right there. As far as mounting options go, you can mount it the way that I have it set up, which is on this T-post, and any type of post will do because this is a clamp. Or you can screw this piece directly into the wall, or you can screw this piece directly into like a deck rail or a floor or something along those lines. What you want to do when you're installing something like this is make sure that there's nothing above it so that it can actually collect rain. Make sure that it's not in direct sunlight all day long so that it doesn't burn up. And make sure that it's not in shade all day long so that it uh, isn't covered by trees and all that fancy stuff. Let's turn the camera just a little bit. There we go. And uh, the other thing is, you don't want it to be a pain in the butt to cut the grass around it. But that's, that's life. Let's get back inside and look at the interior units. This is the exterior unit, all set up and ready to roll. All right, back in doors, we have the hygrometer. And it is telling me it is 75.2 in here, 67% relative humidity, and it is on channel one. We'll have to figure out a little bit more about that later. And 
the display itself, and there's some unfinished business here. Hang on. Oh, well, that was playing with the display. The static electricity from the protector was playing with the screen itself. All right, we have outdoor temperature 75.1, indoor temperature 75.6, humidity outside 53%, inside 61%. I gotta set the time, I gotta set the date. Sunlight 184.7 WM squared. UV index 2 tells me what the moon phase is. The sensor 75.2, 68%. Well, that answers that question. So we can put this sensor somewhere and we have the ability to measure the temperature outdoors, indoors at the display, and then like in the basement or something with this remote sensor. So that's pretty neat. I'll put that over on my desk so I know what temperature it is at my desk while I'm working. And then what do we have? Wind gusts. We have an average wind of 4.3, wind gust of 5 miles an hour, 2.57.7. It feels like 75 degrees outside. Wind is 16 degrees north east ish it's almost northeast it's almost north 16 degrees you guys know what 16 degrees is and it's telling me that it's partly cloudy and windy and sunny outside and it does believe that it is spring rain rate 4.51 inches i don't know where it got that from because it hasn't rained yet that's probably some old stored setting and then relative pressure in inches of mercury is 2991 I like this thing so far. Can't tell if I'd like it better if it lit up or if it stayed black like this, but this is pretty nice. I have seen a couple of other weather display units. This one's pretty good so far. Let's keep on playing with it. All right, so I talked a little bit earlier about the user's manual. This one's actually pretty good. There is a little bit of some translation issues, but overall not terrible. It does come with just about everything you need. Mine did not come with batteries. You need three double A's for the um, outdoor sensor and then you need two triple A's for the indoor remote. It's currently 74 degrees in here. And so that's one little thing that you needed to add there. I did mention the reset button. Um, you can have multiple indoor remotes, which is pretty cool. Lots of stuff going on on the display. 33 different things to look at on the display. I went over a little bit of those earlier so I won't go over those again. The display can be used with batteries. The display is actually a, um, a Linux computer and has a built-in Wi-Fi network device so it will connect up to your network. Um, one of the things that I did not do when I was installing the outdoor sensor was I did not calibrate the physical installation into a north-south direction. So I had to go out and rearrange that, but it was real easy. Remove the four screws, spread the clamp apart, rotate it on the pole, clamp it back down, back in business, no big deal there. And realistically, all that means is if you're pointed south and the wind's blowing north, you're gonna read wrong. Um, so, you know, fiddle with that as much as you care to fiddle with that. This isn't rocket surgery here. Couple of different ways to install it, like I mentioned. Um, flat onto a work surface or vertical onto a work surface or clamped onto a pole. All of those are good options. Mine is clamped onto a pole and it actually does, in fact, work clamped onto round poles in a couple of different orientations. So I think they did a good job with mounting options. Um, there's a couple of buttons on the side of the uh, display readout and I have not really had much of a need to use those. There is a snooze button, and the snooze button, for me, it turned the brightness down on the screen. Um, one of the things that this is missing, or if it's not missing, I couldn't figure it out easily enough, um, is in my mind, it should shut itself off. The display should go off after dark, like it should go to bed, it should go to sleep. And I was hoping that's what the snooze button was for. But the Accurite device that I had before this also didn't do that. Um, so I had to go manually turn that off. It does have alarms and you can set these for a variety of things that you are personally interested in. Time, so you can actually set like, you know, wake me up at 2 a.m. or something like that. Uh, you can have it go off when there's high outdoor temperature or low outdoor temperature, humidity, dew point. Feels like, oh, there it is. Wind gust, wind average, um, rainfall. The rainfall in the last 24 hours was above 7 inches. All right, yeah, that would be a good alarm to have. Um, pressure, indoor, temperature, humidity, dew point, UV index, sunlight, 
So if you had like a UV sensitivity or something, you could set this to tell you not to go outside. So, I mean, it's nice that it does have those. And the thing that I worry about the most is the wind here. Um, because we do have a lot of very old, very large trees up close to the house, and we do get winds in excess of 25 miles an hour routinely. Um, what else do we have in here? Some of the different things on the display was the weather. So I was wrong, it wasn't predicting that it was spring, it was just saying that it was sunny with some flowers growing, which was nice. So sunny, partly cloudy, cloudy, and rainy. And then it does all of the moon phases, and a couple of things about the feels like temperature that they use. Uh, a couple of other things in here that were interesting. One of the things that I like about this is it has a built in connection to the cloud. So you go to Weather Cloud and you also go to Weather Underground. Either one of those work or they both work at the same time simultaneously. Simultaneously at the same time to be redundantly redundant. You've now reached the Department of Redundancy Department. Um, Weather cloud I, I saw did not allow me to change um, units from imperial to metric or metric to imperial. Probably something easy that I'm overlooking, but there it is. It does upload, it does collect the data. You can view it from your cell phone, so there's a good way to do that. Um, the procedure for getting all of this information is good. The procedure for going on to Weather Underground is good. The devices aren't currently supported by Weather Underground, but Ratty does speak the right language that Weather Underground and Weather Cloud are looking for, so it doesn't matter. Um, Weather Underground, Weather Cloud is just receiving the data and Ratty is sending the data to them properly. And then once you get it set up, Weather Underground actually does like historical graphing. So I can show the weather for the last, you know, however long Weather Underground decides to keep it so I can get like a trend of what the winds are like here. And what I will do is I will put a link in the description down below to my Weather Underground page that has this device connected to it. Um, where it got a little interesting was when you have to connect and set up the WF100C and there's a couple of things there. I wish that there was a way I don't seem to see it, but I wish that there was a way that you could connect to this after it was put on your Wi-Fi network. So what you do is you turn the console, the display console on, and you hold down the min-max button for a couple of seconds, and it enters into access point mode. My laptop could not connect to the access point. It couldn't see it, didn't understand that it existed in the first place. My cell phone could connect and then immediately complained that connecting through that access point would not get me to the internet, and I had to do some fakery. That's my cell phone's fault. Um, once you are in there, you then have to go into the interface, which is right here. You then have to go into the interface, which looks exactly like this. Type in your, it'll, it'll select, it'll give you a list of choices for Wi-Fi networks, or you can type it in. So you pick that, you type in your password, and then you start entering your weather underground and weather cloud settings. And these are long strings of text that were not easy to copy and paste because of not having internet connectivity on my cell phone while I was connected to this. And it could have been easier if it was just do your Wi-Fi network setup and then visit this thing in a web browser when you're done. Um, but it wasn't like that. So I went in and I set this up. And so the first time through I did this and didn't have this information. So I had to go back and put it back into Wi-Fi access point mode, connect back to it on my cell phone. And then I went to set this information up and I forgot the checkboxes. So don't forget the checkboxes. Then when I got that set up, it blanked out the password. So I forgot the password. So I had to go back in and do that. So finally I went in and I just filled out every single item on this page until it was done. And then I hit save and then it was fine. And then it finally uploaded to the internet. Um, and so that was, that was good, but it was a little more frustrating than it needed to be, I believe. So there's some, some room for improvement there. I did not get any firmware upgrade notification on my console, but it's supposed to be fairly easy. Um, you know, it's supposed to give you some instructions and whatnot, so we'll see what happens there. They do recommend that you clean the rain gauge every three months and you replace the battery every one to two years. But there should be some type of indication on the display that the battery needs to be changed. I think this is fantastic and I have used the Accurite 5-in-1 sensor with the indoor console. Um, I used that for about two years. Either the outdoor sensor or the indoor console died on me. And the price of fixing that solution, because it was out of warranty, 
is more expensive than the price of buying this, which gives me an extra sensor and built-in internet connectivity. So this one here is definitely a bit better um, in terms of features and functionality. And if you look in the description down below, I will have a special discount code for you that will get you $40 off if you were one of the first 30 people to purchase this. So be sure to click the link down below and use the code and you'll be good to go. The price as of the time that I am looking at this is $189, so $40 off would make it $149. That's easy enough math to do on camera. And uh, overall, fairly impressed. Um, the the Wi-Fi interface thing, I can get past that because it's a one and done kind of deal. It was just kind of frustrating and now that you know to look out for it, it probably won't be as bad for you. And the display not going to sleep, I can see an argument in either direction. You know, in my case, the old display that I had on the Accurite was within line of sight of the bedroom and it was just, it was annoying. Um, this one I will have in a different location and I'll have the light turned down dim and it'll be fine. Uh, this will plug into a wall so it doesn't use up a ton of batteries. This one is battery only and then this one is battery only because it's outside. There's a lot of stuff to go over with plugging in the outdoor sensor um, and I touched on it briefly a little bit earlier in the video but uh, yeah there's there's um, like put it in the shade but then it can't have overhead shade because if it has overhead shade then it doesn't collect the rain and if it has too much shade then it doesn't get to run the solar panel so the fan doesn't kick in to cool it down blah 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 it's it's a thing what I would suggest is that there really is no great exceptional place to put this no perfect place to put this so figure out your best compromise put it up and enjoy the data that you get and in the meantime thanks for being awesome we'll see you in the next one